Well, folks, they've done it again on the 33rd Olympics this year. The closing ceremony uh, was just unbelievable how blatantly obvious this is becoming. So, yeah, we're going to show you some of the uh, images today from this satanic ritual that took place last night at the Olympics. Um, they, they pretend that this is representing something historical to do with the Olympics, uh, and then they obscure what the true intent is behind it. The pentagram shape unfolds in the lights, uh, as you see it here. Look at that. And coming right down through the middle of it, you see that little golden, uh, golden uh, person there? There he comes, down through the middle. To the middle of the pentagram, coming down from the sky. So you can see that this represents the nations of the world uh, in kind of like a transhumanist design, almost like a metallic design, and a strange sun-like symbolism in the middle. You know, they worship the sun god Apollo, and that comes into this as well. And you see the medals here, the close-up of the medals is like the sun rays, the sun symbolism, and um, a hexagon in the middle. But yeah, it's all about the false light, the false light of Lucifer, uh, coming and transforming uh, the old world, the old earth, into this um, age of Aquarius and the age of false enlightenment. So the uh, the ritual unfolds, and you see this uh, orchestra, and they play this very moving, very dark, very atmospheric music. So the stadium begins to become very atmospheric, and the, the lights become dark, it turns to night, and you'll see that the map of the world goes to black, it goes dark. The world plunges into darkness in the stadium. The um, outlines of all the continents of the world begin to flash around. You see Africa and, and different parts of the different continents of the world. Uh, the smoke begins to come in, looking a bit like ash. The earth plunges into terrible times and the ashes of the old world rise, rise above the continents. Clearly this is after some time of chaos in this de artistic depiction. It's the, the earth is in, a, in darkness in a very bad way. And you see here that the, you know, the ashes of the old world are rising up, like the phoenix would rise from the ashes of the old world. Of course, the earth is crying out in this apocalyptic state for a solution for a saviour. And this is their agenda here, folks, because their saviour isn't Jesus Christ of the Bible. But their saviour that comes on the scene in this is a false saviour, as you might guess. Suddenly a great light shines upon the stadium. The whole stadium lights up and the earth beneath lights up. And you see the rays of light across the top of the stadium like a sun rays or a halo, the light coming down. And right in the centre there, you see a golden figure. And uh, this is the figure that comes to supposedly save the earth. And honestly, the symbolism here just starts to get absolutely crazy. Yeah, so as I said, there's the uh, pentagram made of the lights. And down through the centre of the pentagram comes this figure adorned in gold, and you see the figure here right coming down in the middle of the stadium. And this is a very strange looking figure. You see how it's like gold and you've got like sun rays type thing, fiery thing. Could be a representation of Prometheus. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but um, that's my opinion. But yeah, it could be a representation of Prometheus, of this uh, false god that brings fire down from heaven, that false enlightenment the sun god and things like that, you know, the fire coming down from heaven, like an extraterrestrial coming to save the earth. Looks very extraterrestrial, doesn't it? And as this drops down, you see how weird this thing is. It's very, very strange. And and also, just to, on a side note, the, the designer of this, as I've read, uh, the guy that was behind designing these things, he calls it the Golden Voyager, <laughs> the Golden Voyager, coming down from outer space to bring the supposed golden age. But he calls it the spirit of the Bastille, which is uh, based on this statue, um, which is the spirit of freedom, the statue in France. 
And that also links to the French Revolution. So again, a, a, a revolutionary undertone here, humanism rising up, the, the people rising up, self-worship stuff, humanity rising up to defy God and, and bring about a, a revolution against God. That's what this uh, undertones are, you know, a, a revolt against the old world and a bringing in of the new age of Lucifer. And that is what this is representing. And you see here, you might notice as he comes down from heaven into the stadium, coming down into this old world that lies in ashes, this false Messiah, this false Christ, um, supposedly sacrificing himself as a copy of Jesus, you know, coming down from heaven. So we're looking at a scene that's starting to bring order out of chaos, rising from the ashes of the old world, the new age. So, um, as you see, the continents light up. We've got the ashes of this destroyed world, this extraterrestrial. You know, he's walking around the ashes of the old world, and he's supposedly coming to save it. But it is not Jesus Christ. It is the Antichrist. It's the false Christ. It's Luciferian. And you see, as he walks around, um, you bring it, beginning to bring about this supposed new creation, he starts manipulating as he, he points down to this, uh, these, I don't know what that is, like atoms or something um, in the waters here. And he's actually, if you watch the video, he's actually pointing at it. And he has got these like, like lying signs and wonders where he's manipulating it with spiritual powers. And these three come together and... Um, hoist up the Greek flag, and it's like a trinity, a false trinity of these three uh, satanic figures, and they hoisten up the Greek flag, obviously because it's the Greek Olympics, full of worship of false gods historically in Greece. So it's no surprise that it's a very satanic ritual. This is when he puts the flag, remember we've got this destroyed world, he puts the flag into, you know, hoist it up, and then everything begins to change into like a new creation, creating this new world, this new Luciferian world. And you see how everything uh, across the map of the world begins to light up and flash. And uh, you see these, you know, these rolls, these ripples in these countries, in the continents, there's ripples through the earth, like it's bringing about a new creation. It's like bringing about a new genesis, you know, um, literally a, a recreation of the world by extraterrestrial beings um, that are Luciferian in nature. And they're, they're literally, you know, it has the, the, the false powers here, the lying signs and wonders like the Bible warns. You see here how it all begins to go mad on the stage with all the lighting. And then what rises out all the lights on it, what begins to rise up from underneath is the goddess Nike. And, uh, of course, Nike was the goddess, the false goddess of victory, the Greek one. And, um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of admiration and adoration of false gods, fallen beings. Uh, you got the wings on there like a white angel. Um, and yeah, that's Nike, the goddess of victory. So it's like claiming a false victory. It's like a revolution against God, against his creation, against his natural created order. And it's bringing a revolution against the old earth and against God and all of these things. And it's declaring victory, victory over God, like in the Tower of Babel. And then all the lights around, go centre, centre on uh, this Luciferian figure in the centre. We'll just call him the sun god. And then in the background, you see a thousand points of light. You see horses running uh, around the edge. These are all people holding these lights up in the stadium. And then you see the dove, the dove, um, and the commentator on the BBC is like, oh, this represents the Olympics being born again. And then you get this dove flapping its wings in the background. Maybe a dove of peace, but he said it represents being born again. 
So it's the rebirth, it's the counterfeit rebirth, it's playing God, you know, it always does this. But yeah, they're talking about can he unite the world? And that's what's happening. The old world, you know, uh, rising from the ashes. Um, of course, the band at the end is called Phoenix, <laughs> ironically. Phoenix play, the band Phoenix. And just like their symbolism of the phoenix rising from the ashes of the old. And that's what they're showing here. They want to build a new world, the beast system under the Antichrist, and, and unite the world under him. Then this gets a bit weird because these eight, these like grey aliens come down out of the sky, out of space. So these hybrid beings, these uh, alien beings, you can see they look kind of like grey alien type things, extraterrestrials, we'll call them demons, coming from the pit. They're coming from above here, but they're also coming out of the, the, the smoky pit. They're coming up from underneath the stage, and you see all the smoke that's pouring out. And uh, this, this Luciferian figure is in control of them. He's like commander of, the, uh, of these things coming from the pit. Um, they, they follow him. They come up. They're like his slaves. Look at this. Demonic stuff, folks. Really demonic stuff. Terrible stuff. They come up out of the pit. And he is their master. He's in charge of them. They're his slaves. He's in control of them it seems. So just loads of these entities coming up, right? And then they all stand very eerily like this. Uh, at his command, he's in the center, and they're all, he's in control of them all. And look, they just bow down to this Antichrist Luciferian figure. They bow down to him. They're his slaves. These creatures from the pit. I mean, folks, can you say days of Noah? I mean, it's just, this is just like the days of Noah. It's like watching the, uh, the, the days of Noah play out, isn't it? I mean, the, the opening ceremony, you had all that stuff to do with twisting creation and you had the white horse riding of the apocalypse and, and the mockery of Christianity, the Last Supper. That's how the Olympics opened. And then this one, you've got all these entities coming out of the pit of a destroyed world from under the earth, creatures coming up from the under the earth, being commanded by this false enlightened one who is their leader, coming from above, coming from space, in a false sacrifice of coming down from heaven to save the world, to, to mimic and copy Jesus Christ. You know, that's the deception. Of course, it will never work because Jesus will return one day and defeat the Antichrist. But no wonder they're opening the ceremony with, um, you know, a mockery of the Last Supper. This proves the Bible. The Bible was always right. These things really exist. There is a spiritual world out there, clearly, and this is what this represents. So they're all bowing down to this Antichrist figure. You know, he's standing there in front of them all. Um, then he begins to basically command them, and, and they are his slaves, and they begin to rebuild this world from the ashes with him in control, with him in charge. Um, but they're, they're all creating these circles which are coming out from the ashes of the old world. And again, these are going to make the Olympic uh, rings, which will um, go up into the sky. And when they do that, obviously, they, they do represent the, um, you know, the continents of the world coming together, those Olympic rings, uh, when they come together. So that is like showing that false unity and one world, a new world. But they have a central piece. You'll see it, you'll see it develop soon. They're, they're create, and it's like a clock. But we'll go on to that in a moment, because before then, um, we have something important to show as well. Um, you see them creating these rings, or, or at least resurrecting these rings from the ashes. And that's like the clock one. Uh, there's one ring that's slightly different than the others, and it looks more like a, a clock, like a, a timepiece or something. But before that happens, oh, what do we have? We have an ode to Apollo. And apparently, th this is what I was saying earlier, this hymn to Apollo, which they begin to sing here, you know, Apollo is that false sun god, that Greek sun god of old, you know, the old deity that 
used to be worshipped. Some people link, in, link this to Revelation 9-11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So some people do link that to the sun god Apollo, but either way, this is an ancient song that was found in Greece, in Delphi, um, and it is an actual real hymn to Apollo that is thousands of years old. And as they sing this, the, the guy on the piano, you see he comes like from the, the pit, like he comes from a hellish place. This is like him coming out of hell. You see the, the flames and the smoke coming from underneath. You know, and they all pause and freeze and uh, allow this like this this really atmospheric song to start playing out. Uh, the piano is like sideways as it's rising up, you know, and um, it just comes up side like all, everything's skewed. This is a very spiritual thing. It's a very satanic thing. Um, you know, he's coming up sideways. That's the top of the piano. Uh, and he has this really long draping cloak, a uh, black cloak, as he comes out of hell. And he's singing the uh, hymn to Apollo in worship of Apollo. And the way this hovers, if you watch the actual video, the way it hovers is, honestly, is um, very freaky. It's like a spiritual thing. It looks like a, an entity. It's horrible. It's creepy. It's, um, it's weird, you know. It just literally like it just hovers in midair with this long draping black cloak singing the hymn to Apollo. So so that's him playing the piano like sideways up. And then you get this guy singing in the center in the middle here. He's the one singing this hymn to Apollo as the piano the guy plays the piano. Very, very dark, folks. Not good at all. You know, and then they carry on the uh, agenda of bringing the world together, uniting under the Antichrist. Uh, this uh, Luciferian in false enlightened figure is in control still. And then you have the timepiece, the, the central piece there. And uh, you have these entities, and this is the last piece to come into place for this false world unity. And you see that as they begin to do this, um, fulfilling the great work, and this timepiece then begins to raise up, you see, it raises up and goes up above all of these uh, entities and they're kind of got their hands in the air as this final piece, probably the cornerstone, the timepiece, comes, goes up and floats up to the rest of the rings to bring the world together in a false unity and these, you know, and this uh, false enlightened being, this Luciferian being, rises to the top of the hill, the king of the hill. And they all raise him up to the top and he stands up there and he raises his hand and actually, I didn't get a picture, but he looks up and sort of puts his hand up and looks up at the uh, continents of the world, the rings coming together and all these fireworks go off and all the continents light, light up, you see. Um, they're all servants and slaves of him and see that, that piece? has gone into the center of the rings, all comes together as one there. And that's the finale. So there you go, folks. That's the new world under the Antichrist. And that's what it, this is representing. And I can only imagine how much this must sadden God to see this stuff playing out with lots of people, you know, clapping and cheering and thinking this is a wonderful thing. And what this represents is a rejection of our true creator and turning to that very same deception that came in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve chose to eat the from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and they chose self over God, self-worship over God and they, they listened to the voice of, of Satan. Um, so that is this is no different, the mark of the beast, the new world, the new false false luciferian age that they're representing here it's no different it's just the same in the sense that it's a final rejection of god and all those who do reject jesus christ completely will end up in hellfire um, so please turn to him today uh, for salvation from our sin 
He's the only way to heaven. This is a deception. It's lying signs and wonders. Thanks for listening. Take care.